But, um, no, growing up with three older sisters, I had to learn things quick. Like, the hand-me-down clothes were never, like, the greatest with three older sisters. <laughs> and, like, since my older sister was deaf, any time that there was a verbal confrontation, I was always a fan favorite. You know? And, like, but she used to sign, and it, was, and it was beautiful, you know, whenever she would sign. But it got you wondering, like, what if you were a midget? Would that just be, like, a whisper the entire time <laughs> as you're signing? Or, like, what if you're missing fingers? Is that, like, a speech impediment? Like, a lisp <laughs> or something? If you have no fingers, that just looks like shadow boxing, like... <laughs> but, like, if Muhammad Ali was deaf, that would just look like a stutter, I guess, the entire time. Oh, it was a stutter that put it through, right? <laughs> no, but, um... My, my middle sister, though, at a young age, too, she, when she was 19, she took me to get a pregnancy test because she was afraid. But we went to the dollar store to get a pregnancy test. And in Pennsylvania, anytime you find yourself getting a pregnancy test in a dollar store, it's safe to say you can't afford a positive. You know? And even, like, even the positive comes up like a question mark, like, you might be pregnant. You know, let's play these next nine months by year and see how it goes. <laughs> but I, lear I learned a lot from her, like... Now, after I, after I have sex with my girlfriend, like that, that cuddling part, you guys know, you should know, the cuddling part, like when she's thinking about like butterflies and love. <laughs> <laughs> I have the Mortal Kombat theme song going on. <laughs> right? And right before she gives me that kiss goodnight, all I can think of is finish her. <laughs> <laughs> and I Liu Kang punch her right in the uterus. I know nothing about the anatomy, I'm assuming the uterus is here. <laughs> but like, it's bad, because like the steps are right next to my bedroom. So that can definitely work. I know, I'm too poor to afford the Tylenol on the coat hanger. <laughs> and we're, we're taking the show to the next level, people. The next level. No, but like, I've, I've been living with my girlfriend for six months now. And it's been good. Like, I, I love her a lot. And like, at, at times, I feel like I know how OJ felt. At times. I know, right? I told you. We're taking the next level, honey. I told you. But, like, I, I used to be in that, that heartbreak mode. I remember getting my heart broken. And it's like, as soon as she breaks up with you, and you're with your friends, and you're with your boys and everything, and like, they're like, yeah, it's, it's okay, Pete. She, she, was, she was a whore. She's not good enough. Like, you're, you're to totally better than that. And my response is, like, yeah, I know. I missed her. And I love her. So much. My friends were like, it's, it's okay, Pete. But it's different now. But I realized, you know, my last one night stand in college was uh, not, the, not the greatest, I would say. It was usually, guys have a rule, you have to be out by 3 a.m. If you're with a girl, you get done with it, and you leave. I made the mistake of falling asleep. Hi, honey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to, like, I'm just going to let you come in. And you'll like this one. I had a one night stand. Oh <laughs> okay. <laughs> you and I, we're talking after the show. I just watched something about cougars. Mm. I'm gonna be your cub after this. <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, so you get to know me. My last one night stand. And I, I, I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning, I was like, shit, I overstayed my welcome, so I quickly darted. My friends are pounding on my door the next morning, like, Pete, get up, get up, get up. I was like, fuck. And they go, you gotta check your Facebook. I was like, why? Well, she left a, a, a video log, like a little vlog, a little, a little video on my Facebook wall. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it was pretty much my, my crying. And she's like, hi, Pete. How are you? I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? She goes, I just, we had a great night last night, and... You told me I was beautiful at the party, and I thought we shared something. And right before like, I go to turn it off, she goes, You left your phone here? And your mom called? And I answered. And I go, what the fuck? She goes, she says, she just wants to know that she misses you and I miss you. And I love you. And 16 comments from all my friends going, Yo, Pete, this is awesome. <laughs> Bro, this is great. Like, fuck. I remember I told my landlord that. I was like, I, have, have you ever had that? And he goes, what's a Facebook? <laughs> and he, he's an older gentleman. Very old. Older than you, honey. No. You are 
in your 20s compared to him. He's got like one foot in the grave and another foot on a banana peel. <laughs> He's really old. He is bad. And I, and I told him that, and I was like, you know, John, I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry. And he goes, oh, it's okay. He goes, can you help me with something? I was like, yeah, sure, I'll help you. And I had another friend over, his name was Tyreek. And as you know, Tyreek is not really a white name. <laughs> and like I said, my landlord is really old. And Tyreek and I are helping him. And he comes over and goes, Who's your colored friend? <laughs> and I go, What, John? Who's, who's your colored friend? And Tyreek hears me and goes, Um, what? What's your name? He goes, Kunta. <laughs> <laughs> and John goes, Uh, it's a good name. Is that, what is that, English? <laughs> English? Is that, is that what it is? He goes, Yeah, 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 it's, it's Kunta. He goes, Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I was like, oh, it's okay, John. He goes, he's, he's got like that afro. I go, yeah, John, I, I, I know. I said, he looks like one of those uh, Black History troll dolls that you get back in the day. <laughs> and I was like, oh, John, I was like, you can be any more racist. He goes, oh, it's, it's okay. How's your job going? And I work, I work as a sports editor. So I get to travel the games. So I get to go to the Knicks games. And I went to the Knicks games, and I, I interviewed Amari Stoudemire. And right below being very intimidated by my girlfriend's father, being a five foot seven white guy in a mixed locker room is very intimidating. <laughs> and as I'm interviewing Amari, I'm like, hey Amari, you know, it was a good game. He's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> and oh, penis yeah. right around here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, hey. So, it's, it's a great game. But I don't have a problem with that with Jeremy Lin. <laughs> 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 Alright, my name is Pete Lester, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>